Well, good morning. I'm down at the beach on this wintry morning. Um, just making this little video about, uh, well, about salvation. Everything's about salvation. It's the only thing going on in time and space, really. Uh, unless I want to think something else is actually happening here, and then there's nothing else happening here. <laughs> in the in the overall view, there's nothing happening anywhere. But um, the step-off point to realising that nothing's happening is uh, the idea of salvation, which is something that we pursue as a um, inner directive or an inner action of mind to bring about a uh, a stillness in consciousness that allows for an experience of reality or what's actually happening uh, to dawn upon the mind. So I thought I'd make this video today about, um, and it's hard to sort of say about because it's I never really know what, but we had a, uh, a lovely Zoom meeting the other day and my brother Doug and I were um, reminding each other of uh, the foibles of trying to work out um, what it is that our healing process is in our mind with the same mind that creates the problem in the first place. And I thought, this is such a cool teaching. And uh, even though I've um, taught it many times before, I think I actually heard it yesterday. <laughs> you have to teach it to learn it. And it takes whatever it takes, as long as it takes. And uh, my dun I'm wearing my beanie today, but usually I have a dunce hat. So, um, yeah, so the idea that um, it's pretty apparent, you know, when you have a, a moment that's not peaceful, uh, it's pretty apparent when you can see clearly that there is an opportunity to forgive. But attempting to work out the machinations of forgiveness is pointless. It's like the mind that um, manifests the problem in the first place is the mind in denial. It is the mind that um, doesn't want healing. Okay, Its purpose is to keep you here. Its purpose is to keep the problems appearing, appearing, appearing as if they were real. And uh, attempting to use that um, mindset um, as a means to work out some path of healing within the framework, even once you've seen the necessity for forgiveness, is uh, pointless. The whole point of any spiritual pursuit is to learn to become dependent upon spirit, dependent upon God, and uh, learning to become miracle-minded in doing that. And so this morning I was driving down to my marketplace to buy my uh, weekly fruit and vegetables, just reminiscing on... Um, a moment that I heard, a moment that I had in that teaching yesterday, and I thought this would be really good, like it's something that in the teaching of it, you strengthen it, in the in the sharing of the idea, it's increased. So uh, in this idea of healing, I thought I'd make a video because I'd like to share the idea of um, the futility, both, both the futility of uh, attempting to master um, the machinations of healing with the mind in denial and uh, also the opportunity in that to uh, be miracle-minded and to call upon higher or source mind for, uh, for, the, for the healing. And uh, that'll look like whatever it looks like, but it, it's always um, posed with the idea that I'm looking to have a shift in consciousness. I'm looking to have a shift in the way I see the world and myself within it. And so first being able to see that I'm doing this to myself, finger on the nose. <laughs> I, was I was told yesterday that's going to become one of my most prolific teachings, Finger, keep your finger on your nose. <laughs> it's not my teaching. It came, it came from my teacher, Ted, I think, or Greta one of my two main sort of formal teachers but uh, anyway I'm owning it as a teaching now and offering it keep the finger on the nose um taking total responsibility for the world I think I see around me which is a uh, complete illusion and uh, whether that's the 
the world of denial or the dream within the dream or whether it's the dream itself, it's still an illusion, right? The world, if you're reading A Course in Miracles, if you're familiar with the Ur text, um, the world is made as a place, um, as a forum, if you like, or as a, as a platform where we can experience ourselves not as we are in order to come to make better decisions about what it is we think we are um, as we process through um, what you might call self-examination or self-assessment for a moment until you reach a point of self-realization. And uh, the whole reason for making these videos and the Course in Miracles and for Jesus teaching uh, to the multitudes years ago um, is simply to collapse time, simply to bring about an expediency of um, comprehension, I guess, of the activity of the mind in denial so we can choose to not do that, so we can choose to be about something other than that, but that leaving that place blank, leaving that moment open, leaving the slate without anything written on it and allowing the spirit or the spirit of wholeness, the Holy Spirit, whatever, to reinterpret what it is that we think we're seeing um, so that we can use that to um, process the judgment that we've made as an attribute or, or a, um, an ability for ourselves to judge for our holiness because the Holy Spirit only ever judges for your holiness using what we've made as a way to realign or reinterpret our attack and defense mechanisms so that they actually serve our best interests, not go against it. And uh, I hope that's helpful. But uh, I just thought it was really nice when I was driving down here this morning, I heard myself uh, talking about being miracle-minded in the place where um, the impossibility of trying to work out a situation seems to be. right. And there's always this um, idea in, in spiritual stuff, rather than simply letting it go, is that, oh, I've got to sit in that for a minute. I've got to sit with that for a minute. And that's fine. Maybe sit with it for a minute and see what you've been doing, see it clearly. But you can't work out why you've been doing it or what it's been doing, uh, what you've been doing it for, other than to accept Jesus' uh, premise that all activity of consciousness is denial. The domain of ego is consciousness, or consciousness is the domain of ego. All of it, the good and the bad. Right? So. Every mental activity, every conscious activity, uh, whether it be a grievance or whether it be a celebration, um, if it involves that idea of the dualistic, the me and the you, rather than keeping my mind here on my nose, teaching what I need to learn and hopefully hearing it through the opportunity to teach it, um, then it's denial. Then it represents that denial. And in that also, also represents the opportunity again to be miracle-minded. So what drags you out of the, the singularity, what drags me out of the singularity also brings me back. <laughs> but it takes a little mind training to realize that mind wandering is not helpful. And uh, coming back to a miracle-minded um, perception of things, um, even the good things, even the things that don't... Um, necessarily stir a grievance or, or a judgment but uh, even the good things that I think I want to enjoy within the dream you know there's that realization that hang on a minute this is not my home this world is not my kingdom I have a, a kingdom of heaven and by faith alone I shall uh, enter into it All right, so it is a journey of faith it's a journey of being miracle minded and uh, just covering those bases is something I like to do. I like to be, um, you know, with the basics, with the beginning. There's nothing really to work out. There's nothing to get. There's just a state of mind to abide in, to abide with. I can't work out how to do that. It's a given thing. It's something that I pray for, I ask for in my heart and mind together. Heart being the passion, mind being the power of decision. And uh, I find in moments, in holy instants, it comes to me in a moment of revelation, in a moment of um, presentation where I'm like, ah, there, there was a moment, there was a moment there. And then learning to carry that moment throughout the day. 
not always easy to do. The higgledy-piggledy of the mind tends to manifest all sorts of things throughout the day, but with a little bit of practice through being willing to let go, willing to forgive those ah moments. <laughs> they come back. It's like, ah, that's right. Just to be in the moment, to live without the need to define things, without the need to decide this should be like that or that shouldn't be like that. Just to simply abide with God that knows no judgment. It's a beautiful thing. But of course, being a slow learner, uh, <laughs> I have mighty companions that show up to give me the opportunity to teach so that I can hopefully hear it. And yesterday was a beautiful moment where I heard it. And uh, today I'm abiding in the joy of that hearing or what that hearing has brought to me, the joy of, and um, declaring it to my world from the certainty of that joy, from the certainty of being in the experience of uh, allowing what it is I heard myself I should be about to be actually be about. <laughs> yeah. Another one added to the inheritance, you know. Another little another little gem added to my divine inheritance. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. All right, I love you. And um if you've been following along with our Zoom meetings also, they're incredible. It's like some of the incredible moments that we have in those Zoom meetings. It's like we're all learning together. We're all coming along wherever we're at and um, being presented with whatever opportunity we're being presented with. And uh, it's just a beautiful thing. It's like I'm totally amazed to see uh, and totally grateful to see how these Zoom meetings are um, unfolding and uh, allowing that unfoldment to be extended out in a specific manner and in also in a miraculous manner and uh, also I have a uh, a podcast coming up with uh, James Plath um, I've never done a podcast before that I can remember but uh, I'll post it up online when that is and uh, I don't know if it's something people can join in with or whether you see it after the event but uh, I'll put it up online anyway um, it's always nice to have um, a back and forth with someone who's able to open up um, a perspective in, in a greater way you know like nothing could possibly be ever asked of me unless it was for my own healing so I'm looking at the idea of being asked to go on a podcast as an incredible opportunity to hopefully hear something <laughs> That's going to allow the vista of God to extend and, and, and open up more and more and more in my mind, in my mind's eye and in my heart space um, as we go along together on this incredible journey of awakening. So looking forward to it. Okay, peace and love and uh, see you in the light.